everyone welcome back today we're going to be looking again at standard 6.ns.b3 fluently add subtract multiply and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation we've already completed addition subtraction and multiplication we're going to start our first lesson in the series of division so today we're going to be focusing on dividing decimals with whole number divisors just so we're on the same page as it relates to the parts of our division problem, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the number that goes inside the house is called our dividend. The number that we're dividing into the dividend is called the divisor, so that's outside the house. And then our answer is the quotient. When we think about it as a fraction, the dividend is our numerator, the divisor is our denominator, and again, the answer is our quotient. So let's take a look at this example. My dividend is 605, my divisor is 11. So I'm going to see how many times 11 can go into 605. 11 cannot go into six, however, it can go into 60. 11 into 60 is five. Five times 11 is 55. Now we're gonna subtract 60 minus 55 leaves us with five. And then there's a five for us to bring down. 11 into 55 is five again. And that leaves us with zero. So this was not a decimal problem. It was just a refresher on the process of division. Let's take a look at our steps for dividing decimals by whole number. So step one says, place the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. Step two, then divide as you would with whole numbers. Step three, continue adding zeros to the remainder and dividing until there is no remainder left. So let's go ahead and set this up using our division house. And step one says, well, first let's put the dividend in and the divisor out. Step one says place the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point. The decimal point is here in the dividend. I'm going to put it right on top in the quotient. Then I'm going to start dividing. Now seven cannot go into five. However, it can go into 59. Seven into 59 is eight times. 8 times 7 is 56, and we subtract. That leaves us with 3, and then we bring down the 6. Now that decimal point is there, I'm not going to put any other digit in front of it, only the 8, everything else will go behind it. 7 into 36 is 5 times, 5 times 7 is 35, and then I bring down the 4, 7 into 14 is 2 times, 7 times 2 is 14. So what is the quotient of 59.64 divided by 7? It is 8.52. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these next two examples. So I'm going to first draw my division house, and I'm putting 222.64 on the inside, and 11 on the outside since it's my divisor. Now we're gonna just follow our regular protocol for division. 11 cannot go into two, however, it can go into 22. But before I can start dividing, I must remember to place my decimal point in my quotient, right above where it is in the dividend. So 11 into 22 goes two times, two times 11 is 22. Now I bring down my two, 11 does not go into two, so here I do have to place that zero. Zero times 11 is just going to be zero. So that leaves the two again, and now I can bring down the six. 11 into 26 is two times. Two times 11 is 22. That leaves me with four, and then I bring down my next four. 11 into 44 happens four times, four times 11 is 44 with no remainder. 
So here, the quotient of 222.64 divided by 11 is 20.24. All right, let's set up our next example, 184.80 being divided by 12. Take that decimal point, put it right up in the quotient, and then we can start dividing. 12 does not go into 1, however, it can go into 18 one time. 1 times 12 is 12. That gives us 6. 12 will go into 64 five times. 5 times 12 is 60. And I don't need to do anything with this decimal point. It's just going to stay there. I already used it by placing it in my quotient. So now I'm going to bring down my 8. 12 into 48 is 4 times. And I'm going to bring down that 0. And because the 0 is there, I do have to say 12 into 0 is 0 times. Okay. So here, my answer is... 15.40. Now, if it said to round to the nearest tenth, then I could have just written 15.4 and then that would have been sufficient. Eli walked for four hours and his pedometer showed that he walked for 13.68 miles. How many miles did Eli walk in one hour? So he walked a total of four hours and for those four hours, he ended up with 13.68 miles. So now to figure out how many miles he walked in one hour, we need to divide. We need to divide the total amount of miles traveled by how long it took him. So here we have 13.68 divided by 4. I'm going to take that decimal point and place it on top. Now 4 cannot go into 1, however it can go into 13. 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12. 4 into 16 is 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 into 8 is 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. So we here we have that he would have walked 3.42 miles in one hour. Sinai's aunt split $86 between Sinai and her seven cousins. How much money will each child get? So here we have that something is being split. The concept of splitting is division. So we have $86 between Sinai and her seven cousins. Now, how many people will the money be split between? If you said eight, you are absolutely correct because Sinai is one and her seven cousins. So one plus seven would be eight. So here we have $86 divided by eight people. Now, if we were to put a decimal, the decimal would go here because there isn't one located between the eight and the six. So it'd be at the end. So we can go ahead and place that in here. And we can even put a zero as a placeholder. Since we are talking about money, we can put those zeros on the end of it. So 8 goes into itself one time, 8 times 8, okay, now we bring down the 6, 8 cannot go into 6, so we do need to put a 0 here, 8 times 0 is 0, and then now I can bring down those zeros, 8 does go into 67 times, 8 times 7 is 56, that leaves a remainder of 4, and I bring down the next 0. 8 into 40 is 5 times. 8 times 5 is 40. Okay? So what this tells us is that each child would get $10.75. Now, I think I want to do that example again, just for those individuals who may have missed something. So we're going to draw our division house, and we're putting the $86 underneath. Now, because I want to see where if I ended up with a decimal in my quotient, where it would be located, I'm placing that decimal point at the end of the 86. And because I'm talking about money, I know money, there'll be two decimal places. So I can represent $86 
by putting two zeros at the end. So $86 can be represented this way, and it can also be represented this way. Now, we already decided that we were, there were eight people because Sanai is one plus her seven cousins for a total of eight people. Eight goes into itself. Well, before we do that, let's move our decimal point up into the quotient. Eight into itself is one. Eight times one is eight. Nothing left over. I bring down the six. Now, eight cannot go into six. So I must place that zero here. Eight times zero is zero. Six minus zero is six. Now I can bring down that zero. Eight goes into 60 seven times. Seven times eight is 56. 60 minus 56 leaves us with a four. And then we have that other zero that we can bring down. Now, if we didn't remember to write those zeros, that's okay. You could have added the zeros here so that you can continue dividing. So eight into 40 is five. Five times eight is 40. And that's our final answer, $10.75 each. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.